Happy Friday, everybody. Today we're looking at the Atlas Articulated Auto Rack. First things first is I want to go ahead and thank the, the patrons that support me. This is the first patron completely sponsored Rolling Stock Review. This was bought with 100% patron money and will be resold to essentially fund future reviews. We're just going to kind of keep rolling that money back in so I can continue to bring rolling stock reviews every week. And this has been an interesting one and a little bit difficult because I don't know that I can actually recommend these pieces of rolling stock. So difficult because I'm going to have to try to resell this after what might be a little bit of a bad review. But let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the good things before we talk about some of the issues that I've been running into. All right, so we're nice and zoomed in here. Hopefully you can see everything. These are not up to the quality standards of, say, an Intermountain Auto Rack or possibly the new Scale Trans ones. I haven't seen them personally yet. But these definitely outdo Concord Auto Racks, and for the price point, they're actually pretty well put together. The uh, doors on the end when we get there are really put well, uh, put together well. They look nice. From the pictures I've seen, they really do match what the prototype looks like. And then the side here, uh, the rivet work, bolt work, whatever you want to call it, is really well defined. I think the mold work on this is excellent. As a matter of fact, when you look at the grills kind of moving down the right-hand side of this here, they are very crisp and nice to look at. Now, again, not quite up to the standard of, uh, of the Inner Mountain, but honestly, really nicely put together for what it is. As you can see, this uh, mounts to the bottom there. Um, I believe these are actually uh, flat cars that get converted, so you do kind of get a little bit of difference in paint color there. Some of the pictures that I found, you do kind of see this. I don't know if that was accidental or on purpose, but it does match some of the prototypes. Um, as we are looking at this here, you will notice that we have Atlas truck sets and Accumate couplers on this. When I get to runnability, I will talk about that, but not real excited about that. I wish for the price point they would have put micro trains underneath this. As we move down here, keep a... Uh, Look out for all of the, the decal work on this. Everything's legible and nicely put together. This is the NS unit. My TTX ones look just as good. Also, the uh, sun faded TTX models really nail the uh, the color. And I hope you saw that in the beginning when I was running these on the layout. They, they do really look nice. As we get to the uh, articulation point, oop, rolling by here. Um, Looks pretty standard, a little bit plasticky, but can't really uh, avoid that with plastic. But there is the truck set under there, as well as you can see the brake piping as we as we go through here. Not a whole lot of detail on the bottom of these. Basically, just the uh, you know the support frame and then the brake work, and there you can see a good picture of the the long shank Atlas uh, trucks there. Again, on this end, all the decals are nice and legible and everything looks really nice. There we go. Looks nice and prototypical. And like I said, the, uh, the bolt and rivet work on this is really nice. Let's go ahead and talk runnability on this. Now, when you get these, they are in two pieces. You have to assemble them from the factory. And when you're looking to install your center truck, there are two sets of holes on the frame that you can interface that truck with. The innermost set brings it closer together, which is the more prototypical look. This is for running on wider radiuses. I've had no problems running these through my 12 inch radiuses or longer in the prototypical setting. If you move them to the wider uh, set of holes, you get more bellows showing, which is less prototypically accurate. However, it allows for more articulation through the tighter curves such as nine inch or less, and allows these to function in a lot more applications than a normal set of uh, auto racks normally could. So cool feature that they put that in there. Also in the package, you get two screws, one for each uh, to attach, 
And there's also a third one in the bag, should you drop one. Good on Atlas for adding extra hardware. That is a pet peeve of mine because I have a gravity problem and tend to lose those screws. So good on you, Atlas. That is appreciated. Now, like I said earlier, I wish they would have put different wheels and trucks under this. The Atlas trucks are relatively reliable, but plastic wheels for this price point is kind of a bummer. These tend to be on the higher end of the price point, and for the $38 to $40 that you usually find these, I would have hoped to have seen metal wheel sets. Also, I would really like to see Microtrain's trucks on these in the future. I know Accumates are kind of Atlas's thing, however, these are not meant to be in short consists. Auto rack trains are usually very long, and that's kind of what I've been putting together. Now, I have several Concorde uh, auto racks, as well as a couple Intermountains that are relatively heavy. And with several cars behind these, they will not stay coupled with that amount of weight behind them. So the, the Accumate couplers are just subpar for running these in long consists. So... In general, I find myself running these towards the back of the uh, the entire train just because they can't have a whole lot of weight being pulled behind them. Also, these are probably meant to be just set on the layout and left there. These are not for more than likely the, the beginner or newcomer to the intermediate space, mainly because pulling them on and off the layout has been utter drama for me. The uh, the lower frame is all die cast and adds the weight for these, although they're not terribly heavy. And the the upper section, the the auto rack portion of it, you know, you know, from here up is all plastic. The way that they connect and interface with one another is not the best of connections. There are some small locating pins on each end of this to uh, get everything aligned. However, there are just metal tabs that essentially use outward pressure to hold these connected to uh, the lower frame. And grabbing them in just the wrong way, you will notice that they will fall and, you know, come apart on you. Matter of fact, I damaged this uh, set because of that, and I almost damaged one of my TTX units uh, doing that as well. So... Honestly, these are probably more for the advanced user that can put them on the layout, leave them there, and just have them be part of the layout. So that's something to be aware of because the other auto racks I own are really robust and well put together. Now, moving to the actual usability of these things, despite the couplers not being that good, they do pretty well run through all of my turnouts and curves really well so that is something they did get these put together nicely that way i didn't have any major derailing i did have one instance of derailing and i think the turnout was not technically opened all the way so that was my fault and honestly they they look really good going through turnouts and stuff the articulation on these really looks nice they, they do have the engineering well put together on these. The, the weight seems to be on point. They track the rails really well. When you can keep weight behind them, they do run pretty decent. You don't see any tipping uh, like you would see on some of the other auto racks should you put too much weight behind them. However, generally they just disconnect at that point. But uh, if these were converted to, say, microtrans couplers, I really do think they would run well in any consist. They... They do track the rails quite well. I will say, though, being pushed through turnouts, just because of the way these are put together, not necessarily as reliable as I would like. Um, obviously, these are not really a switching set of pieces of rolling stock. These are kind of meant to be put in a unit train and pulled at relative speed. And for the most part, they function really well doing that. Even at faster speeds on the layout, they tend to stay on the track really well. I didn't have any derailing at that point. So, 
If you're into the switching scene, these are probably not for you just because of the way the articulation works as well as the truck mounted couplers, they tend to not get pushed through turnouts very well, but it can be done slowly and carefully if you are paying attention. So at the end of the day, I have a little bit of difficulty recommending these, which kind of sucks because I would love to resell this unit to recoup some of my money. And I'm still going to probably list it on eBay to try to get rid of it. Like I said, I did damage it a little bit. I ended up breaking off uh, one of these footsteps on the other side. So hopefully I can recoup some of my money and reinvest it into some other rolling stock. We will see. Um, I honestly can't recommend these. They, Unless you are willing to do a microtrains conversion on them, spend more money, put these up in over the $40 range. Other than the novelty of seeing one or two of them on the layout, they're just really not good enough pieces of rolling stock for me to recommend. They're just too expensive for what they, what they are. Now, if they had metal wheels and, uh, you know, microtrains couplers pre-installed from the factory at this price point, I think we'd be talking a different game. Also, if these dropped in price down into the high 20s, low 30s, again, might be changing the conversation a bit. But picking these up for the $38 to $40 range, honestly can't recommend them. So thanks for stopping by, everybody. I hope you had a good week, and I will see you this Sunday for the Cato P42 review. It's going to be a good one, so uh, tune in. I got lots of information on those. So thanks for stopping by. Bueno.